test for instance is for instance the stickers that we put in children's bedrooms and that continue to diffuse a greenish light in the dark or a watch or a clock hands which remain visible in the dark. However, a fluorescent material does not emit light in the dark. But when we light it, it emits a very bright color which seems unrelated to the lighting. And this is actually true because if we light it up with an ultraviolet source of light, also called black light, the color becomes even more brighter, such as, for instance, text written with fluorescent markers, or teeth, which are naturally fluorescent, and white cloth thanks to bleaching agents incorporated in washing powders. In fact, in most cases, it is much more spectacular because the object is not fluorescent under a usual lighting and only a UV lamp allows to see the fluorescence. This is the case, for example, in credit cards or banknotes safety markings or even naturally fluorescent stones. So, phosphorescence and fluorescence seem to be very different. Yet, when we look at it closely, both phenomena are almost identical. In both cases, the material has to be lit up, and in both cases, the material re-emits a light of a different color. The only difference is that, with regards to phosphorescence, the material keeps on emitting light if we stop lighting it. In order to understand what happens, we first have to remember that light is energy. Light is composed of tiny specks of energy called photons. And the energy of a photon depends on its color, or wavelength. If we follow the colors of a rainbow, photons are less and less energetic when we move from purple towards red. For example, red is twice as less energetic than purple. The matter is made up of atoms and when a material emits light, consequently, these atoms emit photons. When an atom emits a photon, it spends energy and so this energy must be provided to the atom. Usually, energy is provided to the atom via electricity. But in the case of phosphorescence and fluorescence, the energy is provided in the form of light. An atom absorbing a green photon's energy can re-emit a green photon. If it loses a bit of energy on the way, it can re-emit a yellow or red photon because these photons are less energetic than a green photon. But an atom absorbing a green photon will never be able to re-emit a blue or a purple photon. It has not enough energy for that. On the other hand, an atom absorbing an ultraviolet photon will be able to re-emit a photon of whatever color the eye can perceive, since these colors are less energetic than ultraviolet. These mechanisms are related to the material quantum properties. The properties directly result from the microscopic structure of the material, particularly the structure of the atoms of which it is made of. They also tell us that time slips by between the absorption of the light and the moment it emits again. This time can significantly vary from the millionth of seconds up to several hours. As regards fluorescent materials, this time is very short. When the light is cut, atoms emit the energy that they have stored up within a few millionth of seconds. So, at our scale, they are inert as soon as the light is off. On the contrary, as regards phosphorescent materials, the time lasts several minutes, even several hours for some of them. Therefore, when the light is cut, they keep on emitting light all along. The quantum properties of the material also tell us that a color of the re-emitted light depends on the material. Besides, they require that the material cannot absorb or emit a light of whatever color. Thus, the color of the fluorescence is determined by the structure of the material. By mixing several fluorescent pigments, we obtain several colors, which, when they combine, give an impression of a white light. This is the principle of fluorescent lamps, or of compact fluorescent lights. Here, electricity is used to stimulate a gaze which produces ultraviolet light, which afterwards is converted into light visible by the fluorescent pigments 
deposited on the surface of the lamp. Finally, we cannot talk about fluorescence without mentioning the famous Aquaria Victoria jellyfish. As a fluorescent lamp, this jellyfish naturally emits ultraviolet photons through bioluminescence. These UV are intercepted by its green fluorescent protein, which re-emits a green light through fluorescence. The gene of the protein, incorporated in other proteins, has allowed to make tremendous progress in our understanding of certain biological processes. Besides, its discovery and the development of applications have allowed their authors to be rewarded with the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2008.